Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this time I want to talk about the RC3 looper from BOSS and how I'm currently using it um, and how I transfer files back and forth. Um, basically this has a USB connection and has a USB um, SSD type drive inside of it and you can store WAV files that are 16-bit and most people use that for uh, maybe a drum loop or for just whatever they're going to record on the device. Uh, but what I wanted to show here is how I'm transferring files that are um, longer, kind of atmospheric things that I want to have play in the background. So I'm kind of using this as a sample trigger uh, of sorts. And um, you'll see here on the right-hand side, when you plug in the RC3 into the USB for your computer, you'll get a device pop up and you'll see a folder called Roland and there's two folders inside here, data and wave. Now we don't want to touch the data folder, definitely, um, but the wave folder, um, you could connect directly to this and um, manage your files that way, um, but I find it a little bit easier to actually make a complete copy of this wave folder and uh, put that on my desktop so that I have that available here as kind of a mirror of what is on the device. This way I can work with this folder when the device, when the device is not connected and then when I'm ready to transfer a bunch of files I can do it all in one step. So we'll do an example of that here. Um, here on the left hand side we can see that I have uh, a couple files. These are samples of uh, nighttime sounds when I visited my sister in Virginia. So I've got a couple of those here. I've already converted these to 16-bit, um, which is important. You have to do that before you can use it on the Roland anyway. Uh, but now I've got that done. I've got my copy of this WAV folder here from my desktop. That's what this one is here in the middle. And I've already dropped these into a couple slots. Now you can only do one file per uh, numerical slot here and um, I have a bunch of other stuff already in here and actually what I did I think earlier today or yesterday um, you'll see here the most recent date uh, on these folders is telling me that there's something recently that changed in there so if I sort this uh, entire folder by the date it was modified I can see here that there's several things here that I'm ready to update my RC3 with. And if I go over here to my RC3 folder, this is the actual folder that's on the device, and I sort this by the date it was modified, um, I can see here that everything past February 8th is going to be new. So now this tells me that, okay, well, I have some new stuff I want to put in there, some things I moved around. Uh, so I'm just going to take those, and I'm going to highlight all of them, and I'm going to drag them over here. I want to make sure that I drop this not inside one of these folders, but in the, the folder itself here in the wave folder. So I'm going to drop that there. And it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite, which I do. So go ahead and replace. And now I'll take a second. So this does two things. It allows me to work on gathering up sounds without having the device connected. And then it makes it um, a lot less painful to drag those sounds onto the new device, um, onto the device just doing that in one shot. And I find that that's a lot more palpable of a workflow. <laughs> So then we'll see those pop up over there. Give it a second. And there we go. So now I've got my VA night stuff here. So fairly simple idea. Um, really just a matter of, you know, your file management type stuff. But um, I find that this helps me a great deal, as long as you have some space to dedicate towards having a copy of this. It also serves a purpose of 
giving you an extra backup of your materials so that if something happens to your pedal, if it gets lost or stolen or corrupted in some way, uh, at least you have a copy of those uh, files there and um, you can just go from there. So that's what I got for today. Thanks for watching.